All right, so I'll just start by asking uh, to you guys, who is the prototypical superhero? Slash, Su yeah, comic book hero. Superman. Arm fall off boy. I'm just kidding. It's probably... Okay. It know. is, I, in fact, Superman that I watched today. So no, I watched, that was uh, Arm fall off boy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Alex. I watched the... 1978 Christopher Reeves Superman movie. Ooh. If you want to put some images on the screen of uh, yeah. Dude 49 Superman. Oh, I can do that. Ooh. Let me go to that. You know they got to have some. Like, yeah. Some with Christopher Reeves like, yeah. getting fucked by a horse. Yeah, like shooting lasers out of his dick or something. Yeah. yeah. The question is how long before it gets to that image? <laughs> I'm shooting lasers out of his dick. <laughs> it's a challenge I'm gonna take. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Superman. Mm. Da, 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 da. This is a a classic comic book hero, Superman. Everybody loves him. Everybody hates him. He is iconic. He is the. Almost invulnerable man, weak to only kryptonite. I think he's become something of a legacy superhero slash comic book hero. And the 1978 film is kind of a campy classic, but it's definitely worth watching. There are a lot of Superman movies, uh, so I'll focus specifically on the movies today. I don't have the comic book history up, but uh, the first Superman movie dates back to... 1948, followed by Adam Man versus Superman in 1950, and then Superman and the Mole Men in 1951. And the lead star in that one is George Reeves, who I have to dig some do some digging here, but I, I imagine that's his father, or Christopher Reeves. Uh, and then they didn't have another Superman movie for another 27 years, and 1978 marked the first Christopher Reeves film in Superman. So I'll talk about kind of what makes this movie special and just some of the plot and some of the elements and what makes it campy and cheesy too. Uh, but first, subscribe if you're new and if you are a Superman or woman. Your choice, I guess. Or a choice made for you. But you're extra super if you subscribe. Just saying. You should superscribe, not just subscribe. Mm -hmm. So Christopher Reeves is kind of your classic like American handsome man he's got the cowlick and he also has the clark kent going on and the movie starts with him on planet krypton as a baby and the population on the planet is about to explode but they send him out in this star to a galaxy far far away i'm just doing this from memory i'm not doing this while reading the plot and he ends up in Earth in some bumblefuck town, raised by shepherds. They have some kind of Romulus, Ramus thing going on here. Uh, shepherds is kind of exaggeration, but they're farm people. And it fast forwards a bit. Uh, actually, before that, you see even baby Superman save the family. Uh, I think the car falls and then the kid picks it up. He's just sitting there smiling. <laughs> He's got kind of this uh, charm to him, even as the baby. And it fast forwards to him in his teenage years, and he's like the towel boy for the football team. And they, they kind of, I think this plays into his character a bit, where he's kind of like this uh, unexpected suave dude, but everyone kind of sees him as like your your towel boy. It's just throughout the movie. Somebody who's like, I guess like humbling, like un unimposing. And uh, so the girl's like, hey, Clark, you want to come to the after party? And a kid on the football team's like, no, he's got too much to clean up. He's not going to make it. And then he just takes the girl and then they drive away. And so Clark Kent kicks the football all the way out <laughs> into the fields. And he just runs all the way across the Midwest, runs alongside a train. A girl's taking a photograph. And then he just jumps right in front of the train. And the next thing you know, he's just standing with his arms on the truck like, hey, guys. And he sees the truck full of uh, babes and the football player. They're like, hey, Clark, how'd you beat us? He's like, ah, you know, I guess I drive fast or whatever he says. I'm butchering it. But that's the point is that uh, it's just that, um, you know, he's 
he can't let anything stop him. And on his 18th birthday, he winds up back in the Arctic with this Krypton kryptonite that he throws into the ocean. And then uh, he has revealed his destiny, who he is, his true name. It's like Kamel. And uh, Kal El, right? Oh, yeah. Ka- Kal El. Kal El. Ka- uh, whatever. Thank you. And uh, the dad says the true father reveals himself as this apparition, Wizard of Oz style, and says, You were made to do good and bring peace and benevolence to this planet. So be a good boy, Clark. Or be a, be a good boy, Kalel. And uh, that thus begins his first reveal with the cape, the big chest, and he, the flying. And it's it's very funny the effects that you see. The budget for this movie was pretty high. It was fifty five million dollars, but uh, throughout the movie you see Kalel as Superman uh, performing all these uh, <laughs> heroic deeds and and just incredible acts. And it does it through this really interesting technical style where like the screen moves really fast and he green screens around smaller to big in and out and all in the classic like. Yeah. Superman pose. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think there's a lot of like funny little scenes that you see. Uh, it, it goes then to adult uh, Superman where he's also Clark Kent. I guess that is also his name as a, as a teenager too, but uh, where he's working for the Daily Bugle and he meets Lois Lane, who is an ambitious go-getter reporter, but also can't spell. There's a, uh, there's one P in rapist is a like standout line from uh, the the editor who rejects her story. Uh, she can't spell, so that's kind of the irony. Is that like she's like it, it has this incredible um, drive, and in fact, she's about to get robbed, and she hands the purse to the guy, and then drops it, and uh, then she kicks him in the face. <laughs> she's like she's really she's really awesome in this movie. I kind of like Lois, although she screams a lot, <laughs> and. Um, so yeah, and that's, this is the first time you really see some of his heroic ability uh, where the guy, the robber, fires the gun and then Clark catches the bullet, but she has no idea. Uh, and uh, he falls and she's like, Clark, are you okay? And Clark has this kind of unimposing, like geeky vibe to him. He meets her and he's like, wow, it's really swell to see you. And she's like, who says swell? <laughs> so uh, you have this juxtaposition of the Clark Kent goofy uh, guy with the glasses to uh, to the big heroic Superman who swoons the ladies and becomes this big force and reveals himself after saving her in a helicopter. Uh, you have the reveal of the antagonist Lex Luthor. I want to say Lex Luthor was Lex Luthor, and uh, he's like in the the catacombs of the New York subway system and um, like the he's really his his antagonism or his evil is really revealed. Like when he uh, uses this trap for one of his henchmen to get them in the lair. And then a policeman follows this system and tries to go in. But in order to work, the subway train has to pass. And so the policeman goes up against the wall. And instead of turning around, it pushes him out into the subway. And then right before the subway hits, it just catapults him right to the subway. And the police like that were following him because they were trailing this guy who is Lex Luthor's henchman. Uh, they see the shredded cap on the train. They're like, damn, another one down or so, whatever they say. Yeah. So uh, there's a there's this real like depth of character that I like, even just in who I've described, the errors of Clark, the the shepherd parents, the, the classic antagonist evil dude Lex Luthor. Uh, and he's quite bright. He really works with uh, his imagination in how to take down Superman, who is like this big impenetrable force, but uh, you know, Lois Lane even has some pitfalls revealing some of his weaknesses, his inability to see through lead uh, in the newspaper. So that's how he finds out. And Lex Luthor's thing is he wants to be this like big, bad criminal, like the the biggest one the world has ever seen. Classic comic book stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I think it functions really well in this way. There are some plot elements that are kind of ridiculous. Um, Superman turning back time. 
I, I won't say bore on it, but uh, if you see it in the movie, it's uh, kind of ridiculous. And uh, there, there are other elements like that. Uh, I think some of it's charming, some of the effects. Uh, there's a good use of miniatures. So one of the key features is Lex Luthor has like two missiles that go off and one hits the San Andreas fault. And then like earthquakes start erupting, like massive earthquakes. And so you see like dams break and it looks like a bunch of bath water, like pulling over um, gravel and like miniature houses. And uh, it's pretty obvious by today's standards, but I, I just think it's really, it's nice to see stuff like that in like a, a day and age where we're used to more CG uh, mm -hmm. taking over these kind of things. And uh, even with Superman green screening out, you know, <laughs> so it's so funny. Him him with Lois Lane in the sky, holding her, then dropping her, then she starts screaming it, and then he just comes back up and catches her. Uh, she's always falling. She's always screaming. She's always being saved. But uh, it's, uh, yeah. It was it was a good watch. I appreciate watching Superman for today. Nice. Classic. <laughs> yeah. I've always wanted to watch this movie. It just never I never got to the point where I sat down and watched it. It it, it sounds good. It sounds great. Yeah, I would give it a week for when I talked about it, so that way you maybe you don't remember some of these elements. But it is on Amazon Prime. I have the free trial right now for just like Christmas shopping and stuff. But uh, you know, you also get the um, the service for it, so I found it there. Okay. Um, whenever I think of Superman, I think of at the end of Kill Bill Volume Two. I guess I should say at the end of Kill Bill. <laughs> but yeah. Um, Bill gives just an amazing it's that's such a good movie. It's just, it's like one of my favorite movies ever. But he gives like a really interesting take on Superman. Not not even like really a take, just kind of explaining what Superman is. And it's it's just so memorable and so like chilling knowing who he is and everything. But um I've cut that kind of stuck with six with me now when I think of Superman because I used to just think like he's stupid. And it was, it was like, oh, they did they, like early superheroes. They just have to be like invincible monsters that have no weakness. I mean, his weakness is kryptonite, something nobody has ever heard of or whatever. It's like, who cares about that? That's silly. Um, but um, I think I think when after hearing that and then kind of letting it sit with me and, and you know, growing and maturing as an adult, I'm like, OK, I get it. Superman isn't it's not really something you should take as seriously as his powers. It's more like the reflection of society of like what what could be and then what what they view humans as is like a meek like weak um like like his, his interpretation of what a a person is that could blend in is is just like what what Clark Kent is. And I find that so interesting now so I think I think that movie gave me like a new appreciation for Superman. Yeah, it's almost like a body snatcher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's weird, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> In a good yeah, way, dude, you're, you're right. No, dude, I I watched I I just rewatched Kill Bill one and two for uh, my birthday recently, <laughs> like back in August. Yeah, and okay, yeah, no, you're right. That speech is amazing. Um, yeah, I like Superman. Always, always, always viewed Superman as more of like a like like, like a Greek god type figure, you know. Uh, and uh, I feel like that's how like, a lot of like especially early superheroes were sort of transitioned over from like like mythology almost. So, uh, very cool. I haven't watched this movie in ages. I know I've seen it, but it's been so long. Like I was so young when I originally watched it that I couldn't recall more than like a few bits and pieces. I do remember the turning back time part though that is hilarious that's like a pop culture <laughs> reference at this point isn't it yeah yeah it is and that's yeah, a, you've probably seen yeah. clips of this movie even though you haven't seen it spencer mm -hmm. like there are some moments that are are kind of like cinema staples i feel like yeah and that's uh gene hackman is lex luger lex luther right lex luger's a wrestler lex luther <laughs> Right, I believe so. I saw his name. Um, I see. I'll go to the movie and I'll find out for you. But yeah, it's so weird thinking of Gene Hackman as, in that kind of role. I mean, obviously, this is him when he's a little younger, but I always just think of him as like 
inspirational coach guy. I don't know. I, it's funny to think of him as like a villain, but I'm sure he does a great job. He's a good actor, but uh, it's just it's it'd be interesting to see him in that role. Better than what's his name? Who's the guy, the guy that played Lex recently? Was fucking the the guy that played Mark Zuckerberg? Remember his name? Oh, land. yeah, yeah. Um, Eisenberg. Something? Yeah, Jesse Eisenberg. Jesse, Jesse Eisenberg. I couldn't take him, dude. I could not take him seriously as like Luther. They like sh- they even shaved his head, and then they like they gave him a thing where he loved like Jolly Ranchers, and I'm like, what the fuck is this guy? <laughs> He was like a big actor for a while. It looked like he were trying to replace Michael Sarah for some reason, but I don't know. He got some, yeah. He was like the he, he he was like the charismatic Sarah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Weird. I always have mixed feelings on Superman. Like I like him, but he's just so standard. I feel like like the standard vision of what a superhero is that I think he's like unexciting. Yeah, yeah. I think the lessons yeah. learned from Superman is you got to make, you got to give some kind of weakness, or else it's not really a lot going on in the story. Well, it's just, I mean, it's, you know, at, at one point Superman was like the top DC character, and then you know now it's Batman, who's you know a guy that has nothing. So it's kind of like, you know, mm-hmm. it's it's obvious to see what people like. They like you know more, I guess, more relatable characters, and like Superman's hard to hard to relate to. <laughs> You can relate to Batman because he's just a fucking guy. They're like more <laughs> relatable characters, like a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, but yeah, but you know, it's possible. That's possible. It's possible to be a billionaire. Right, right, right. You can, it's not possible CEO, to be an alien. The minority of <laughs> yeah. the country. <laughs> Look, if I can... If he, Elon Musk wanted to be Batman, he could do it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't wouldn't it be great if Elon Musk was Batman? That's relatable. That's, that's, that's give him the, time. That's what the people give want. Him give him time; he'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Who played Lois Lane? Is she hot in this movie? I'm sure she is. Margaret Kidder. You gotta be kidding me, Margit? Mar- it's yeah, it's called Margot, like the Elden Ring boss. Yeah, I know. I, was just, I think I, I think I fought her one time. Uh, let me see, let's see. You did? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, no, she was pretty attractive. She aged gracefully. I respect that. Ooh, but yeah, there's mm. some pictures in here. Not bad. They have to have a hot chick, is it? Because it's like this. This is like the era of like the Bond babes, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Did uh, did she and Superman? Yeah, no. Can he? <laughs> well, there's a sequel. Yeah, I think he can because <laughs> she asked about it in one of the interviews. Because oh. he goes to her for like an exclusive interview, and uh, she's like, "So, uh, Superman, Superman, can you fuck?" <laughs> She's like, do, do the do the the parts match the drapes or something? You know, like something like yeah. that. Yeah. She's like clearly trying to understand like, his anatomy. Yeah, but like Superman, but like Superman has to be honest. He's like, no, Lois, I have an incredibly tiny dick. <laughs> it is so small, like every human. It's, like, it's so small, like every human. It's, it's, <laughs> it's like, like a Ken doll. <laughs> There's nothing there. Yeah. I have no pieces under there, unfortunately. <laughs> What you see is what you get. It's as smooth as a baby's <laughs> bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I secrete semen through my tears. Would you like to come cry with me? <laughs> How romantic. <laughs> like Which, the, by the way, the his, worst lover. I, I have to. I have to give it up for his acting. His expressiveness in this film is really good. Like just facial expressions. The real question is, are you going to watch the sequels? Yeah. Oh, maybe. I, I started the second one. It it pulls off on the interesting cliffhanger because the time travel thing is like forbidden. There's like, you must not do this, Superman. <laughs> it's forbidden. <laughs> they they can, like, keep repeating this in the echo chamber. Uh, and, and so there's like some conflict of like what will happen next. They kind of leave on that. So 
Ooh. I think that's pretty cool. So I I would be open to it. Okay. Yeah, it's a shame with Christopher Reeves. You, you know, he. I don't know how far out after the Superman stuff or what he had planned, but it's just it's sad to see somebody like that. That's clearly a big star. Just take a real downturn. I think we just lost mm-hmm. him recently, right? That's 2004. Oh, he died in 2004. Never mind. That was recent. <laughs> I, for some reason, I thought I, I'd, I'd heard of it again recently. Ago. I guess maybe somebody related to him or something. But but um, yeah, that's that sucks to see a Superman get like what like paralyzed from the like quadriplegic. Was it quadriplegic? It was right. From his horse accident. I guess he wasn't. I guess he wasn't invincible after all. Oh, Alex, come on now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's me. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's no. That's I'll go to the right equestrianism now. section of Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> they have this. Uh, Reeve began his involvement in horse riding in 1985 after learning to ride for the film Anna Karenina. He was initially allergic to horses, so he took antihistamines. He trained on Martha's Vineyard and by 1989 began eventing. His allergies soon disappeared. He had leg injuries as a teen while skiing and later broke three ribs in a riding accident on The Tonight Show in March 1987. Skip around a bit. On May 27, 1995, Reeves' horse made a refusal. That's a horse riding term where it's the failure of a horse to jump a fence to which is presented. Witnesses said the horse began the third fence jump and suddenly stopped. Reeve fell forward off the horse, holding onto the reins. His hands became tangled in them, and the bridle and bit were pulled off the horse. He landed head first on the far side of the fence, shattering his first and second vertebrae. The resulting cervical spinal injury paralyzed him from the neck down and halted his breathing. Paramedics arrived three minutes later and immediately took measures to get air into his lungs. He was taken first to the local hospital before being flown by helicopter to UV Medical Center. He had no recollection of the accident. It's quadriplegic. God damn. Yeah. That's brutal, dude. I've never ridden a horse to this day. <laughs> yeah, you won't catch me on a horse. If it can take down Superman. Man, we should get a horse horseback riding, dude. Well, we're not going to be competitive horseback riding, so that's the thing. You, but, you know, <laughs> I think people think of me as like a Zelda fan. They're like, don't you want to ride a horse someday? I'm like, I'll, I'm good. Yeah, yeah I, I actually don't I like it. You know, I, like, I, have, I have ridden a horse, but I actually don't like it because it's like it feels weird riding like another animal. Like, like another living thing. Weird in the uh, nether region. Weird and just like the for the philosophy of riding like another living thing. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know why it was. I don't like I don't like the idea of riding other animals. I do like the idea of riding other people though. That's true. I, I will I will do that, especially yeah. those that are lower class. Mm. Mm-hmm. If you're in a lower tax bracket, just be prepared. I'm going to just strap a saddle <laughs> on you and take you for a spin. <laughs> no wonder you guys are Batman fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's becoming more relatable by the minute. <laughs> yeah, this is this is yeah, this is the button mapper episode. We find out that we are incredibly classist. <laughs> That'd be great if Bruce Wayne was just like a real dick. He like I really I gotta keep my billionaire persona. Up. Yeah, I like Alfred's just questioning. Like, why, why are you riding the people, <laughs> Bruce? Why, why are you doing that? Just, wow. Bruce, get off the people. <laughs> They're not going to suspect I'm Batman if I'm also riding the, the, the know. poor people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was picturing he like he's like riding him as Batman. Oh, as Batman. Well, Batman's, yeah. Batman's Alfred. <laughs> Bring me my subjects. I think it'd be genius <laughs> if if he he played up his billionaire persona to the point where he was a huge dickhead. In, in the public. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. they would never suspect. Yeah, I was just like, man, Bruce Wayne's a... <laughs> Bruce Wayne. He's, he's riding a human centipede down the main street. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Wayne waving to the people. <laughs> that would be smarter. That would actually be a smarter persona because nobody would expect him to be Batman. Right, right. Then he's like, then crime happens yeah. and he has to hop off and <laughs> run, into, run into the yeah. bathroom. <laughs> 